Solving linear systems using elimination when you have fractions and decimals. So this is just another little trick that you need to know how to do. Um, we've already talked about the elimination if you look to the previous video, but this time we're going to do ones that just involve a little bit more work. Once you see how to do them, you're going to laugh. It's easy, easy. Okay, so we have decimals. And sometimes this will happen when you have a word problem that has money in it or or fractions later when you're doing um, mixtures of sub substances or something. So we need to eliminate, but we want to get rid of the decimals and the fractions before we begin. So the easiest way to get rid of decimals is to multiply by a power of 10. Obviously, right? I bet you probably guessed that on your own. So if I do each of these equations by 10, I'm going to just move the decimal over one place, right? That's all you have to do. And then you have nice, beautiful numbers to work with. So I'm going to write every term in both equations. I'm going to multiply each term by 10. So 10 times equation 1. So all you do is just move that decimal over. So I have 2x. And of course, if you had 100, you'd multiply by 100, right? Okay, so minus 3y equals minus 1. Equation 2, I'm going to multiply that by 10 as well. And that's going to give me 5x minus 4y is equal to 8. So now I have to go through the process that we learned in the previous lesson on finding a coefficient of one of these variables. So I can either make these both 10s or I could make these both 12. Right, so one or the other, not both. Um, I'm going to go with the 10 because I think that would be nice. So I'm going to do equation one now times, well, sometimes you change these equations. Like you might say 10 times one equals equation three, especially when you're doing a lot of different operations. But for now, I'm just going to say equation one. We're going to multiply it by five because we're still calling them equation one and two. Depends on your teacher what they like. So I'm going to multiply this by 5. I said I was going to multiply this by 2, and then I wrote 5. So times 5, 10x minus 15y equals minus 5. And this equation by 2 is going to give me 10x minus 8y is equal to 16. Okay, so now I can eliminate. Remember, if they have the same sign, you subtract. Remember that big S, same sign, subtract. It's an easy, easy way to remember what to do here. So when you subtract, make sure you put that minus sign here and you be careful. I mean, this obviously you're going to say they're gone, but minus 15 minus minus 8 is minus 15 plus 8. So that gives me minus 7y. And minus 5 minus 16 is going to give me minus 21. And I divide by minus 7 and I get y is 3. So now that I have y is 3, I'm going to plug that into one of the equations. So when y equals 3, and I'm going to use one of these equations. I'm not going to go back to the decimal form because that's just, just going to be too messy. I don't want decimals. That's why we got rid of them. So I'm going to say 2x minus 3 times 3 equals minus 1. So 2x minus 9 equals minus 1. 2x equals 8. And x is equal to 4. So therefore, 4, 3 is the point of intersection. Okay, so that's not so hard, is it? Just multiply by 10. So let's do one more. You can maybe stop the video, write this down, and try it yourself, and then come back. I'm just going to go ahead and multiply both of these equations by 10 first. So all that means is we're moving the decimal one to the right. Okay, so there's the first one. Second one. 7x minus 2y is equal to minus 1. Now look how easy it is. So which one do you want to get rid of? Well, I guess the smallest one would be to make these both 10s, right? So I'm going to do equation 1 times 2 
an equation to times 5. And note I wrote it the opposite way, but it doesn't matter. It still works. 7x minus 10y equals 24. So everything times 2. Don't forget everything. And 5 here, that's going to be 35x minus 10y equals minus 5. And we have the same sign here. They're both minuses. So I'm going to subtract again. Um, now, you could have done this equation by um, minus 5, and that would have meant this would all have changed signs. One or the other, okay? So 6 minus 35, that's going to be minus 29x. These are gone. And 24 minus minus 5 is 29. So that's going to give me x equals negative 1. Okay, sometimes it's a good idea to just put a box around it. It's also very helpful for your teacher when they're looking for your solution. They can see where you've where you've made your mistakes or where you found where you got your answer. Okay, so now I'm going to plug in when x equals minus 1. And I'm going to plug it into, well, let's put in the second equation. So 7 times minus 1 minus 2y equals minus 1. That's minus 7. I bring it over here. I'm going to add 7. So that's going to give me 6. And now divide by minus 2, both sides. Don't write that out all the time. As you get better at these, you're going to just... You need to show your work, but you don't... Depending on your teacher, I would not require this step to get to this. I would just say y equals minus 3 would be fine. So therefore... Don't forget your concluding statement. Make sure you put them in the right order. It's also a common error. Is the point of intersection. Okay, so let's move on now to the fractions. Everyone's always afraid of fractions for some reason. But we'll dispel that myth. We shall make it easy. How do you get rid of a fraction? I'm sure you know what to do. So I've got three here we're going to do. Each pair is a system. So I'll just make a little line here. So if I wanted to get rid of the fraction here, what you want to do is multiply by the common denominator. So the common denominator of 3 and 4 would be 12, right? So I'm going to multiply each term in this equation by 12. Let's see if I can squeeze that in here. I'm going to put a 12 here, I'm going to put a 12 here, and I'm going to put a 12 here. And this one, to get rid of the 6 in the denominator, I'm going to multiply by 6, this times 6, and this times 6. And there we're going to have nice, easy to work with. Now remember, when you multiply this, 12 times 4 divided by 3, the 3 goes into 12 4 times. So 12 divided by 3 is 4, and 4 times 4 is going to give me 16a. This one, the 4 goes into the 12 3 times, so minus 3b, and 9 times 12 is 108. Here, the 6s divide into each other once. I'm left with equation 2 will have 5a plus 6b, that was easy, equals 6. So now the easiest one to eliminate, obviously, is going to be the b here. If I multiply this by 2, I'll have 6, and then we can just work our magic. So this equation, we're going to have to multiply by 2. So 2 times equation 1, put it right under. So that's 32as minus 6b equals 216. Don't worry that the numbers are big. Now I look at the variable that I have made the same. That's these ones here. So I'm eliminating the b's and the signs are different. Same sign, subtract. Different signs, add. Negative plus a positive would make them zero b's here. So 35 or 32 and 5, that's 37a is equal to 222. And you probably would want to get out your calculator to do that. And I did that already here. 
222 divided by 37 gave me 6. So, see, I do my homework before I do your lesson. So, A equals 6. Now I'm going to find B. So, when A equals 6, mm, let's use this one. It's pretty easy, right? So, 5 times 6, I'm plugging in the 6 here for the A, plus 6B is equal to 6. So that's 30. 6 minus 30. 6B equals 6 minus 30. Minus 30 is minus 24. And B is equal to minus 4. Off the page, and felt like it. Therefore, mm, A was 6 and B is minus 4 is the point of intersection. Great. Okay, let's go on. Again, you might want to just stop and write the questions down and try them and then come back and I'll take them up with you. Okay, so I look to the denominators. Don't multiply by 18. Multiply by the common denominator, the lowest, right? The lowest common denominator. Don't make it more difficult. It won't make it wrong. It's just too much work. So if I wanted to get rid of a 3, a 6, and a 3, I could multiply everything by 6, right? So I'm going to put a 6 here, and a 6 here, and times 6 here. This one, I'm going to have to change this 1 and 1 half to an improper fraction. So that's going to be 3 over 2. So let's just rewrite that one, 3 over 2. Okay, so how do I get rid of 12, 4, and 2? Well, 12. Right, 12, 4 goes into 12, 2 goes into 12, so I'm going to put a 12 here, I'm going to put a 12 here, and I'm going to multiply this by 12. So let's go to our next line. So equation 1, once we simplify this, 3 goes into 6 2 times, that's going to give me 2 x's. This goes in once, so minus y, 3 into 6, 2, and 2 times minus 2 is minus 4. And then this one, 12 goes into 12, so it gives me equation 2 has x and 3y, minus 3y. And 3 halves times 12, 2 goes into 12 6 times, and 6 times 3 is 18. Okay, so now that I've done that, I have to look at how I'm going to eliminate here. So I have 2, this has 0. So my choices are multiply this equation by 2, so I have 2x, 2x, or multiply this equation by 3. I'm just going to do times 2 because that looks like the easiest one for me to do. Right. Okay, so equation um, 1 I'm going to leave alone. So I'm going to say um, 2x. 2x minus y is equal to 4 in equation 2. 2 times that, that's going to be 2x minus 6y equals 36. Okay, so now this time, my the variable I'm going to eliminate has the same sign. They're both plus 2s, so I'm going to subtract. So I put a minus sign here. Minus y minus minus 6y, that's going to be... 5y positive. So it's minus 1 plus 6. And 4 minus 36. Oh, I seem to think I've made a little mistake here somewhere. Did I make a mistake? I multiplied by 6. I had 2x minus y equals minus 18. I might have started off with the wrong question because this is going to be a nasty answer, but it's still a legitimate solution. But it was supposed to work out nicer. Let me just see if I copied the question down wrong. Um, x over 3. Oh, it's supposed to be minus y over 2. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, x over 3 minus y over 6 equals minus 2 thirds x over 12 minus y over 4 is 1 and a half. That's 3 halves. Do you see a mistake? Oh, I hate it when this happens. 
2 minus 4, 3 into 6 goes 2 times 2 is minus 4, and this is x minus 3y times 12 is 18, is it not? It all looks right. Oh my goodness. It worked out for me before. 5y equals, we're supposed to have 5y equals 30 here. Am I doing some? Oh, look. Look at that. Copy error. Minus 4. Oh, glad we found the mistake. All these copyings from one line to another, you can really make a mistake. It changes the whole question. So minus 4 minus minus 36 is minus 40. There we go. Y equals minus 8. I'm so glad I found that. I hate it when I make mistakes. I bet you do too. So when y equals minus 8, let's get this going here. Don't forget your negative signs. See, they always make mistakes. Those bad negative signs. So x minus 3 times minus 8 equals 18. So this is x plus 24 equals 18. And x is equal to negative 6. There we go. Minus 6 minus 8 is the point of intersection. Sometimes I think it's good that I make mistakes because then you know that I'm I'm not infallible. People make mistakes all the time. Okay, and the last one here. Uh, let's see, make sure we've got it on the page. So I have one third, one sixth, and a half. So what should you multiply by here? Obviously, 6, right? I'm going to put a 6, and if I put a 6 here, and a 6 here, and this time 6, and this one, well, lowest common denominator is going to be 10. I put 10 here, and a 10 here. Okay, so equation 1 is now going to become 2. 6 divided by 3 is 2, so 2m. This is minus an n equals 6 divided by 2 is 3. And this is going to be equation 2 is 2m. And this is going to be minus 3n equals 5. Okay, so this one's already lined up, right? I've got my m's here. And they have the same sign, same sign. That means you subtract. You have to concentrate when you're doing your math, right? If you kind of let your mind wander a bit, you make mistakes. Okay, so these are gone. Minus 1 minus minus 3. That's minus 1 plus 3 is 2. That's where mistakes happen always. Right? These minus minus. And 3 minus 5 is minus 2. So n equals minus 1. And when n equals minus 1, We'll plug it back into, let's go here. So 2m minus a minus 1 equals 3. Minus a minus is a plus. So 2m plus 1 equals 3. Subtract. 2m equals 3 minus 1 is 2. And m is equal to 1. And there we go. 1 minus 1 is the Point of intersection. Now don't forget to put them in the right order when you state your concluding statement here. M comes before N, so the set is M, N, right? The solution is M, then N, and X and Y, and A and B, okay? So that's how you work with fractions when you're using elimination, and this again is grade 10 math in the Ontario curriculum. If you haven't subscribed, please do. Glad that you're all watching and hope you have a wonderful school year. Bye for now.